So welcome to my video on barefoot. Barefoot is something I've been doing for uh, probably close to a decade. Um, but I recently had a look at the research, tried to find what the scientific research behind it is, because it kind of makes sense on an ancestral perspective that you know we didn't grow up with shoes. Like we did, there weren't any shoe trees where we got shoes from. So it makes sense that you know, our feet are designed to walk without shoes, uh, especially on rough terrains, like, you know, we're not used to having pavements. So I wanted to have a look at what the research had found about the differences uh, that barefoot versus being in shoes makes. And it turns out there's quite a few. So to start off with, uh, it changes our uh, foot development. Maybe that's a good place to start. You know, as a kid, uh, it changes how our foot develops uh, and we end up with similar problems from you know having shoes as adults that uh, firstly the shoe shape you know somehow shoes have become shaped not actually like a foot you know they're a lot narrower and so uh, when you wear shoes they compress your toes at the front so your your toes are being kind of cramped into this narrow space which means that all of your metatarsals all of the kind of the toes basically get cramped together and aren't used to being able to spread out and that's an issue because these muscles in here they're designed to spread and to absorb the energy of each step so so there's a, a bit of an issue there initially you also have uh, an issue with the cushioning on shoes so uh, a lot of our patterns we develop through the feedback that we're getting you know from the world you, we, we didn't get taught how to walk we didn't get taught how to run we just do it and the world tells us through feedback from the ground are we doing it right or are we doing it wrong and one of the signals that gets lost when we put shoes on is the uh, impact uh, this kind of the impact of landing on the foot and so what they've found is that people who wear shoes are much more likely to land on their heel bone. So they land on their heel, which means all of the shock load of, you know, that landing, uh, that thud that you hear if someone's walking on wooden floors, that goes straight up uh, the shin bone, up into the knee, uh, means that the hamstrings get loaded more. Uh, and, um, and we also develop weak, or we don't develop uh, as strong calf muscles uh, or ankle, all those kind of areas. So they found that, uh, in contrast, barefooters, they tend to have uh, different uh, biomechanics, so they land more on their midfoot or their forefoot. When they're, uh, when they're running, that is, when they're walking, they land a lot softer, so they don't have that same boom when they land on the ground, um, don't get that same shock load. It means that all of the muscles in the lower leg, the muscles in the foot and the arch, all that kind of stuff, that all has to work harder to absorb the energy. Uh, but you know, we want the muscles absorbing the energy instead of you know bones, ideally. Um, so so yeah, you see uh, the feet of barefooters are a lot stronger. Um, in kids, you get less issues with uh, collapsed arches, that kind of stuff, because those muscles have had to work. There's all kinds of extra trouble uh, in shoes with arch support and, uh, and heel raise, stuff like that, because it changes uh, the, the way the foot has to engage to support itself and also stuff like ankle range of motion. So there's little things like that as well. Um, but yeah, so very different biomechanics, you know, a lot stronger lower legs, a lot stronger feet, a lot more mobile feet and that width and stuff like that in people who are barefoot versus wearing shoes. And they're also, so one of the things that I looked at is, well, does that correlate to injury? Like, uh, do you actually see barefooters getting injured less because they're stronger in all these areas? And the answer is both yes and no. So. The first thing is that the injury patterns are very different. So the research found that uh, the people who wear shoes tend to get injured much more up into the hamstrings um, and knee injuries, whereas barefoot injuries tend to be related to the lower leg, so calf muscles or uh, in the ankle and the foot. And when I delve deeper into this, it turns out that a lot of this is to do with the transition. So 
uh, people who are going from wearing shoes to uh, particularly running barefoot, um, that's when the injury is most likely to occur. And it kind of totally makes sense because uh, suddenly you're asking the muscles to do so much more work than they've been doing before. Uh, if, you, if you don't really take your time with it and start off really gradual, then there's a really high risk that you're going to overload the muscle and that's when you get injured, right? So, uh, so it seems that in terms of injury, you are less likely to get injured by going barefoot as long as you really take it steady when you first start off and you basically start from ground zero. So even if you can run marathons, you've got to start right back at, you know, no, zero running, uh, maybe start with intervals, um, really small uh, and kind of often to build it up. Uh, and after maybe six months or a year, you might start to really feel like, okay, these muscles have now developed to a point where they can uh, deal with the loading. And as well, it's good, worth noting that that's something you can do without uh, having to go actually barefoot. Actually, you can change your gait style to, uh, to be more barefoot, more landing on the front of the foot, and that's gonna uh, strengthen the Achilles and the calf muscles uh, and a bit in the arch without having to actually be barefoot. So it's actually quite uh, accessible as well to start to strengthen uh, this barefoot pattern. And so another note is that it's actually important that you do. So one of the other potential issues is if you switch to uh, barefoot but you don't change your gait so the way you're walking or the way you're running then that as well can actually have a bad effect because if you think about it you've got all of this impact loading from your kind of shoe wearing pattern now the shoes you can get away with it because they have soft cushioning so they allow you to get away with it to a certain extent if you now switch to barefoot so all of that shock loading is happening without the cushioning but you and you don't um, change that gait, then that suddenly increases your injury risk because you've got higher load not being absorbed by the cushioning. Um, so it's really important that when you do switch, that you tr uh, play around with your your gait, your the way you walk, uh, the way you run, and make sure you're landing softer, absorbing the force more through the feet and lower leg muscles. So. Um, some good points then. So it seems fairly positive as long as we switch to barefoot in an appropriate way, it's going to have positive effects, going to benefit us. Uh, but there's also some other factors. Uh, so nowadays, barefoot shoes are super common. This is like a, a big new thing. Uh, barefoot shoes, I'm starting to see them around all over the place. And the basic idea behind barefoot shoes is they're wider at the front um, to accommodate the foot so they don't cramp the foot, they don't compress the toes like we were saying before. Uh, they're also flat so there's no uh, elevation difference between the heel and heel in the front of uh, the shoe which means that the ankle gets full range of motion and they're also really thin so the soles are really really thin so they don't cushion the foot, um, they allow full motion supposedly um, and they don't allow you to get away with impact forces from uh, poor gait patterns. But are they the same as actually being barefoot? So there's been quite a bit of research again on this, comparing uh, barefoot shoes of different types, different varieties with being barefoot. And the research basically shows, unsurprisingly, that the closer the shoe is to being barefoot, so the thinner the sole is, the more flexible it is, the closer it replicates the effects of being barefoot. However, up to a point. So there are, there's no shoe out there, no barefoot shoe, which is going to completely replicate being actually barefoot. Um, for example, you know, on this, where we've got a single sole, this sole is gonna stop each of the toes from being able to move individually. Yeah, so that's a, a big difference as well that's the same through the foot so it's not going to get that same variation that same mobilization work through the foot um, and then like i said with different sole sizes that's going to again decrease uh, the the loading on the foot and how how it has to uh, absorb it so yeah they're good they're great they're a means that we can 
you know, you can look normal. We don't want to be wandering around barefoot, right, in, uh, in our modern day society. So it's a great way that you can get away with pretty much being barefoot um, by, and not people not being able to, not staring at your feet all the time. So it's a good one. As well, if you are transitioning, then you can use it as a kind of gradual step loading. So if you start off with a pair of barefoot shoes that have quite a thick, maybe a slightly thicker sole, not super thick, but slightly thicker, or maybe have the insole in, um, then that's gonna make it slightly easier as you start to transition. And then as you get more comfortable with it, as the feet get stronger and the ankles get stronger, then you can get thinner and thinner with the shoe as well. So uh, yeah, really cool that we've got all these amazing barefoot shoes that we can use nowadays. Um, and yeah, great for uh, fitting in while being barefoot. The, however, hygiene, that brings us onto hygiene quite appropriately really, um, that a lot of people thinking, think getting dirty feet, you know, being in contact with whatever it is, the pavements or the grass or just, you know, getting uh, in dirty puddles or barefoot is uh, unhygienic and it's going to result in your feet, you know, I don't know, getting infections, all that kind of stuff. Interestingly, the research on this <laughs> may not be what you expected, but the research shows that actually wearing shoes is less hygienic than being barefoot. So, or at least from what I found. So, bacteria, they love moist, warm environments. That is their favorite, right? And when we think of a moist, warm environment, it's like, hmm, well, when you're, wearing, when you're barefoot, it's actually quite dry because they're out in the open, they're nicely aired, uh, you know, it's usually not super warm. Um, it's not certainly not uh, body temperature. Uh, whereas versus in shoes, you've almost got this little cocoon of like uh, warmth and moisture all being held in there, in your socks and in the shoes. And so I found that the, certainly the um, bacteria that uh, cause kind of foot smells and stuff like that, they're actually much more likely to kind of propagate and spread on your foot when you're wearing shoes. So it can actually be more hygienic uh, in some res respects to not be wearing shoes to go barefoot. But then we've got the issue of hygiene of mud, right? So dirt, is, is dirt and stuff, you know, on the ground actually hygienic? And again, our, our intuition, you know, in our modern day society at the moment, we love cleaning everything. But it turns out, again, kind of unsurprisingly, that our, the bacteria that are in the grass, in the dirt, uh, and in the sea as well as so in water, are actually very, very similar to our natural bacteria that are on the surface of our skin. And it's hugely important that we have that bacteria, very important, our skin biome for our uh, skin health. And it turns out that being in contact with the earth is actually more likely to maintain a healthy skin biome, right? And one of the times that, it can, that we can end up with unhealthy bacteria populations is when we wipe out our bacteria population. So maybe, say you took some Dettol and you sprayed you know, a piece of your skin and you cleaned it you know, really thoroughly. Uh, that has then removed all the bacteria and now uh, bad bacteria have the chance to overpopulate that area of skin because this uh, bacteria biome is usually keeping everything in check so nothing can kind of end up dominating and everything is kind of nicely balanced. And so, uh, being in contact with the earth basically keeps, keeps that nice balance, avoids one uh, bacteria type over uh, populating and uh, yeah, avoiding the shoes um, means that we avoid kind of propagating just uh, bacteria levels generally. So yeah, interesting one, uh, potentially more hygienic to be barefoot and getting the feet dirty. Uh, with the caveat that obviously if you have cuts, if you have open wounds on the foot, there are, you know, stuff around in the world, uh, in the natural world, uh, bacteria and stuff that can get in through cuts and can cause infections, which obviously we don't want. So that's a caveat. Avoid uh, getting your feet dirty at all, really, if, uh, if you have cuts and stuff like that on the skin, but that's fairly intuitive. I'm sure all of us know that already. So uh, last few things that we found out when looking at the research on barefoot one is uh, grounding and grounding again is quite a uh, popular topic it's this idea that when we're physically in contact with the earth 
you know, the Earth is a source of free electrons. And the idea is that when we build up a charge in our body, so, you know, you, we all kind of understand this of like when we rub a balloon on our head, our hair stands on end, you know, that's a simple version of building up a charge in our body. Um, but potentially devices and stuff, the theory is could also build up this uh, charge on our body. And uh, supposedly this is linked to loads of health, negative, negative health effects. And by being in contact with the earth, we can uh, regulate our charge on our body. We can neutralize it because the earth basically supplies electrons if we need them, um, or we can ground to the earth as well. Now there are, there is quite a lot of research on this uh, that, I, that I looked through. Uh, a lot of it was really poor quality. Uh, there was a lot of risk of bias uh, and um, kind of the results weren't very strong in any particular direction, very small number of people actually in the study. Um, and so really the, the conclusion that I got from looking at the research into grounding and earthing, as popular as it is, is that there was not satisfactory evidence to say that grounding is a legit thing. Um, now, that means that it's yet to be tested. There's a lot of anecdotal evidence of people's stories of how beneficial grounding has been for them. So, you know, that's usually a sign that, okay, well, something must be going on. Um, the thing is, we don't know what it is yet. So, you know, it could be that maybe just the sensation of having um, sensations on the sole of the foot, maybe that has a positive effect through the body. Um, there's all kinds of things that like you can come up with it, as many theories as you want as to what is going on, why people are um, getting the benefits. Maybe it could just be a placebo as well. Um, but without rigorous testing with higher numbers of people um, kind of being tested and with, you know, really high, well-controlled studies, uh, it's impossible to really say for sure what is going on and so really you just got to try it for yourself you know try going out connecting with the earth uh, for 20 minutes or something like that see if it, you notice a difference from uh, from grounding and uh, and yeah go with that that would be your, your best uh, your best answer really to to if there's any effect from it um, so what am I missing out we've done grounding there was I think that might be all of it so yeah, a lot of different stuff that we looked at with the research when it comes to barefoot. Um, the general, the general conclusion is that barefoot is, you know, good for us in a number of ways. Uh, improves our foot health, our foot strength, our foot mobility, our foot hygiene, um, and there's loads of ways that we can do it as well. You know, we've got barefoot shoes nowadays that we can use, um, and uh, and so yeah, generally this is a great practice to uh, improve your physical health, improve your foot health. And uh, yeah, I'd highly recommend giving it a go. Uh, if you are switching from shoes to barefoot, taking it slow, taking it steady, not rushing it, allowing the foot to build up strength, uh, doing gait retraining, retraining the way you walk, the way you run, and potentially also some foot mobilization and strength exercises, um, which are a good idea to help build up that strength needed to transition to being barefoot. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it interesting. You can find all of the uh, scientific research uh, referenced in the article I wrote on it, the three articles on, uh, two articles, sorry, two articles on it. Um, so feel free to check that out if you want the links to all the research. And, uh, yeah, let me know how you found the video. Let me know your stories about being barefoot or transitioning. Um, it's been great on the Instagram already to get loads of people's stories and finding out kind of different issues maybe people have had or uh, how people have found it. So, yeah, really nice to get um, to hear all of that. And so let me know in the comments. And, uh, and yeah, ask me any questions if you have them.